are back. I am back here with Sean. Now, if you have been following me for any length of time, you'll know that there's a couple themes that I am trying to bring to the world. One of my big pet peeves and that causes me endless frustration is this industry that I'm involved with called auto detailing. Endless choices, endless voices, so much hype, so much BS. And the problem and the reason I get so frustrated is because I remember what it was like to be a beginner. And I remember being so overwhelmed. This is like, oh my gosh, I don't know where to start. There's so many choices. And now, see back in the day when I started 30 years ago, it was the direct opposite. There wasn't enough information. So you were left out in the world, the big evil world on your own to figure it out by yourself. And that's literally what I had to do. Now the direct opposite is the problem. It's what I call information overload. Mm -hmm. So I brought Sean in camera because what I want to do is illustrate a problem and the answer to that problem is what I'm going to meticulously deconstruct and dissect moving forward. So I've been off the radar for a long time. I had some personal issues, which is a whole nother video series for another time. But now I'm back. But in the meantime, I did not sit on my butt doing nothing. I was actively engaged in research and studying and this type of stuff. So information overload. The problem is, is there, because of the internet, there's so many voices out there and there's such contradictions between the voices. So Sean here, you're a beginner. Yep. You have, have you polished an entire car even by yourself? No. Okay, what, in your own words, how much polishing experience do you have? Very little. Define very little. Um, from very little to none. I would say... Okay. okay so. so the last video we shot, yeah, oh yeah. we actually got you behind a buffer, correct? Right. That's true. Yeah. Okay. So you have a little bit of experience now. Yeah. And by a little bit, almost none. Right. So what I want to do is illustrate or to have you talk about an experience that you had yeah. with, let me grab something here. This is a product called Blacklight. It is put out by a company called the Chemical Guys. Chemical Guys. Now, just to clarify, what you are about to hear is my opinion. My opinion only, okay? And what is the saying? Opinions are like buttholes. Mm. Everyone's got one and they all stink. So, my opinion and your opinion may stink, but whatever, it's my opinion. But my opinion happens to be based on experience. So, while Chemical Guys make some very good products. Mm -hmm. They, in my opinion, mm -hmm. are one of the worst offenders of saturating this industry with endless products. Yeah. They have like a thousand and one products. Okay, that was hyperbolic, mm -hmm. perhaps. Right. Mm -hmm. They probably only have 991 mm -hmm. products. Yeah. Not really a thousand and one products. Right. Point is, is this is where I want you to come in. You tell us a story yeah. that led up to this finding itself into your hands. Right. Um, so I went to the chemical, I went to chemical guys because I was doing a job. I had to, I was going to detail a, a black forerunner and I needed something for the swirl marks and the scratches. I walked in, told him what I needed. Uh, he really sold me. I'm going to stop you right here. So, cause I want to clarify yeah. Yeah. cause I'm really directing this at beginners. Right. So swirl marks yeah. and scratches you right. said. Yes. Okay. So in your opinion, based on your limited experience, right. how, what would be the process of eliminating swirl marks and scratches? What do you think would require in order to do that? Right, so in my head, since I'm a beginner, I require a polish. A polish, okay, a polish. so right there. Yeah. Let's define polish. Right. What does a polish mean to you? Uh, something to mess the, uh, the scratches and the uh, swirl marks. See how interesting that is. Yeah. That, that is the key yeah. word, yeah. masks. masks. Yeah. So let's define that word. Right. When you say masks, yeah. what does that mean to you? Covers it up. Covers it up. Right. Okay, so let me ask you this. As a professional, why would you want to cover it up rather than eliminate it? Right. Is it because you don't know that you can actually eliminate it or because you want a simpler approach because you want to just get in and out 
Does that make sense? Yes. I would say it's probably a little bit of both. Okay. Uh, but mainly it's because I don't know. Okay, so you have this like cloud of like information, opinions that are floating around, yeah. and you're trying to figure out like what the hell's going on. Right. Would that be a fair assessment? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. So it was very interesting that you said masks. Right. Because there is endless products that will mask that. Yeah. Because, for example, a wax or a sealant, mm -hmm. that's one of the objectives or or, or benefits of a wax and a sealant, it's not just about protection. Right. Because a lot of guys will get hyper-focused on, oh, I want to protect my paint, therefore I need to wax it or I need to apply some kind of sealant to it. Yeah. But the other goal of wax and sealant is to mask, right. conceal, cover up imperfections in the paint. Mm -hmm. So that would be the most simple solution. Right. The problem is, is waxes and sealants are limited in their ability to mask and conceal imperfections. Mm -hmm. It can only do so much. Yeah. It's all relative to what I call the canvas. One of my favorite analogies is surfing. Right. For example, I could be the best surfer in the world, but if I'm put out in the waves, and those waves are what we call little ankle slappers, uh -huh. waves that are basically six inches tall, yeah. How much can I possibly do? Right. Okay, I, I'm screwed. Yeah. I don't care how good of a surfer I am. I can't work with that, guys. Mm -hmm. So, if your canvas, as in the car that you needed to detail, is so bad, wax and sealant, I don't care how many layers you put on it, yeah. it's only gonna do so much because the canvas is so bad. Right. Therefore, you recognize that, hence, swirls and scratches you wanted to in your words mask it yeah but i'm here to tell you it's like well wait a minute why don't you want to eliminate it right and that's where paint enhancement and paint correction are different right paint correction is permanent meaning you correct it a lot of guys are actually confused by that term mm -hmm. a total beginner would be like correct paint what does that even mean i didn't know paint was incorrect where it needed to be corrected kind of right. like an English class mm -hmm. you you get a check on your answer because it's incorrect well you need to correct that problem there and it's like oh okay so now we're talking about paint like okay so that that paint is wrong yeah. it needs to be corrected what does that even mean well what it means is that you are changing or altering the surface of the paint mm -hmm. so that it looks better Okay, but you want to do it at a permanent level. So wax and sealants is a way to enhance it so mm -hmm. it looks visually better, but it's not permanent because you haven't changed this, the surface structure of the paint. Right. That's where polishes and compounds come in. Oh, and by the way, do you know the difference between a polish and a wax? Or no. I'm sorry, no. a polish and a compound? No. No, most people don't. Right. You know why? because there's no standardization in this industry. It's all over the board. Right. So what one company calls a polish, another company might come up, call a compound mm -hmm. and vice versa. It's like, well, which is it? Which is it? And that's the problem is, is that there's one, no standardization and everyone has an opinion. Yeah. The simple answer is compounds, more aggressive, as in more abrasives, polishes, less abrasives, finer abrasives. Okay. So compound would be like the heavy lifting, polishing would be like the light lifting. Okay. okay that would be the simplified explanation of that. Okay. But there you are right. in chemical guys, right. you're asking a very specific question, yeah. got a black car, scratches, swirl marks, what do I do? Right. So you take it back and tell me what happened. So I basically explained to him that I needed something. You keep talking. Okay. I need something to, uh, to paint. Uh, black Forerunner, and the guy went straight to this product called Blacklight, and he said, I said, are you sure this is going to work? He said, this will work amazingly. So Amazingly. Amazingly. Okay. This is exact words. <laughs> Let me stop you right yeah. there. Yeah. And see, this is where I, I'm such a, uh, I'm just such a butthole. Let's just call me a butthole, okay? Yeah. About communication. And this is why in so many of my videos that I drive home why communication is so important. Right. For example, when you have people that are using terms, but 
there's three of us in this room right now. Mm -hmm. We can throw one term out and we could ask all three of us what the definition of that term is. Guess what? We would come up with three definitions. It's right. like, wait a minute. If we can't even agree on the definition of a single word, how are we going to actually communicate? Right. So when you say you need something that works, what does that mean? Right. So in your head, you say, I need something that works. I'm going to guess that in your head that probably means works in the context of remove scratches yeah. and swirl marks. Yes. But that's where I'm going to bring around and say, well, wait a minute. Weren't you the guy that says you just want to mask it? Right. You're like, oh, yeah, I did say that. So masking and permanently changing it in a better way is two yeah. different things. Right. Because I could throw a hundred different products at you that will mask it. Yeah. And so in your world, according to your description, right. masking is would would qualify as working, correct? Right. It would. But now yeah. I'm telling you, yeah. what if you could correct that and eliminate it at a permanent level? Now, when you walk in there and you say, I need something that works, mm -hmm. now that's going to mean something entirely different, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So, A, this guy mm -hmm. that's working the shop, yeah. he's limited on his skills. Yes. Because if it was me that you came to, I would clarify this stuff. It's like, right. okay, you want something that works. Tell me what you mean by works. Right. And you'd say mass. It's like, oh, really, mass? You want something that mass? Well, here's five different products. Why don't you just pick out what looks the coolest to you and, and let's just go with that one. Right. Because they're all gonna mask. Right. But I'm gonna tell you, it's like, hey, Sean, do you know that you can actually correct that? Mm -hmm. And what I mean by correct is that you can permanently change that paint finish yeah. so that it looks better and it will remain better. Right as in it will not just go away because the product you put on top of it's going to go away. Right. So if I told you that, you'd be like, oh, okay, I want that. Yeah. Do you think that's what you would have said? Yes. Okay. So the point was, is I'm trying to illustrate a few things here is one, poor communication is going on. Right. That's always a problem. Yeah. So, but he, as an expert, right. because he's the one manning the shop, mm -hmm. he's the one that's representing, essentially, yeah. chemical guys. Right. That's what he's selling, is chemical guys. Right. So you come in and you say, swirl marks and scratches. Right. In my, in my opinion, he should have said, or known in his head, is like, wait a minute, this guy's a beginner. He's gonna be limited on his ability to even, to, to just, to even describe exactly what he wants. Right. Do you recall if you use the word masks to him or you just said you want something that works for swirls and scratches? I, at the beginning, I believe I said this something that works for, I, I, need, I, I need something to remove the scratches and swirls. That's why I told okay, you. Okay, right there. See, remove. Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah. we just introduced yet another term. Right, right. Okay, remove. Yeah. Okay, do you think masking something is the same as removing something? No. I don't. Right, but, but he, he kept on changing it for me. Like instead of like answering my question, he would say, "Well, you got to use blacklight." And I said, "Well, does that actually work on the scratches and swirl marks?" And he said, "Well, it actually masks. Oh, well, masks the the, the the prom." Okay. But he never actually like he never actually gave me what I wanted. But I, at the time, I didn't know any better. Now that I, yeah. and this is what I talk about yeah. is for guys because of your inexperience. Yeah you don't even know the right questions to ask. Right, right. That's and what I was doing. that is the problem. So yeah. part of my strategy with my videos is to not just educate, but educate you guys in the context of, wait a minute, what if you guys are A, asking the wrong questions, yeah. and B, not even asking the right questions because you don't know what the right questions are to right. ask because you just don't have that experience. Right. So we have mask, we have eliminate, right. we have paint correction. Those are all different yeah. strategies. But the, but the problem is that he told me that this will fix all those problems. Yeah. That's the problem. So it's so. misleading. Yes. Let's just call it misleading. Yes. We're not gonna say he was lying or no. anything else. It sounds like he had a specific agenda in that moment yeah. to 
sell you black lights. Yes. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know if it's a brand new, latest and know. greatest. Yeah. Maybe this is their thousand and second product. Yeah. Or maybe it's their nine hundred and ninety third product. I have right. no idea. Right. Point is, is he wanted to get it into your hands. Yes. What if I told you that this was actually a weight loss problem or a weight loss solution? Would you believe me? Probably. <laughs> why would you believe me? Because uh, you've been doing it for thirty years and you're an expert. Well, uh, kind of, actually, actually, <laughs> this is where I'm going to be sarcastic. Okay, 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 yeah. Because often what the industry, their main agenda, regardless of how they present their self, yeah. is to separate you from your money. Right. Because they want to sell you stuff. And that's how they're going to separate you from your money, is they're going to come up with more and more stuff. Right. Different labeling, different terminology, different color, different smells. Yeah. It's going to pull those emotional triggers, because that's how we buy, by the way. Right. This is a little marketing uh, lesson here, a little sidebar. We buy, as a rule, based on emotion. Once we make the purchase, mm -hmm. then we rationalize it intellectually. So the industry, if they're smart enough, they know that. So they will reach in and they will figure out how to pull those emotional triggers. Yeah color like this packaging oh it's purple well that's special that's unique it smells good black too. light yeah. well that's a cool label yeah that's that's unique yeah. mm, smells good yeah so they're they're pulling all these emotional visceral what's called visceral triggers right so you walk away and think oh well, I just talked to an expert chemical guys is well known in the industry mm -hmm. clearly I have the answer to my problem yeah I'm gonna go and I'm gonna perform some paint enhancement, paint correction, right. and I'm gonna look like a rock star, and now I'm gonna have all these customers flock to me, and I'm gonna be the greatest detailer on the block. Yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? That, that was the idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very yeah. good. Yes. So, back to it, they sold you this. Right. You left uh, with the notion that this would solve your problems, yeah. which was specifically swirl marks, right. scratches. Yes. Okay. So this is where I want to do some hands-on demonstrating because I read this labeling and I'm not going to bore you guys with the labeling. You can look at it yourself, but it's filled with all kinds of what, what I call theatrics, uh, hyperbole, uh, marketing tricks, yeah. you know, anything from nano labeling or, sorry, I misspoke nano blending okay what does that mean um but i could tell when you show me this i read the description and i could tell you it's like sean this is not going to do any permanent paint correction right. Right. at best it will cover stuff up right. which to fall back on your word mask right. so yes it will mask it will make the paint appear to look better yeah but it's not going to do anything at a permanent level right so Let's just show firsthand what permanent looks like yeah. versus masking or enhancing looks like. Right. So what I want to do, and this is going to appear like yet another commercial for CSI. Mm -hmm. This is part of my frustration is that I have been aware of this product for 15-ish years. I don't know exactly how long. It's just that that's how long, how, how far back this goes. But because it has not been available, it was a product that was designed to answer very specific problems in the auto body world. Well, the auto body world has enough parallels with the detailing world, specifically paint correction, paint enhancement, defect removal, that there's gonna be a natural bleed over. So I was always frustrated because on my website and my videos, it's like, wow, what am I gonna do? Hey, Sean, there's this really cool product. Yeah. It's what's called a single product polish. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, you can't get it though. Right. Only I can get it. Right. Or only the auto body can get it. But it's really, really cool and it yeah. will like literally solve so many of your problems. Right. How frustrated would you be? Very frustrated. Very frustrated. Yeah. So, so why would I do that? Because I know there's other products that will work. Yeah. Okay. There's that word again, work. That's right. a gross generalization. Well, let's define work, Darren. What does that even mean? It's like, well, it will work. It will do paint correction. 
Okay, that black light, that yeah. ain't gonna be it. Right. That will do paint enhancement, right. but it ain't gonna do paint correction. Sure. So I know there's plenty of products that will do paint correction and paint enhancement. There's mm -hmm. plenty of products that will do only paint enhancement. This product, once again, this is going to solve so many problems and I'm going to like, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a sledgehammer approach, mm -hmm. okay? Not only do I want to come in with a sledgehammer no. and just rip the place down, because in my opinion, it needs to be ripped down a lot of ways, but I also want to come in with a precise, uh, like, like, a, like a scalpel, like a surgeon's scalpel and dissect this industry mm -hmm. with all the hyped up terminology, all the BS and the hype, so the guys understand like, okay, what is tech, nanotechnology even mean okay now i know what it means wait a minute is that even important or relevant to my world as a detailer maybe yes maybe no so i want to deconstruct this world so the guys specifically beginners will be like oh wow now i know now i know that 99 percent of the opinions and stuff out there is just crap yeah now, yes, that's a little over dramatized. Right. I'm just trying to drive home that point. Right. So that's what I want to do. So let's do some hands on stuff here. What we've done in advance is we have sanded this area. I bisected it. Oh, is that for a term of the yeah. day? I bisected it. Mm -hmm. So what I've done is I split it in half. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the black light we're gonna use it on these 1200 grit sanding marks. Now, I know there's gonna be someone behind the <laughs> yeah. scenes there who's gonna be like, dude, that's not a fair comparison right. yeah. because Sean, it's unlikely that that car you're trying to detail right. is gonna be scratched up with 1200 grit. Right. No, it's not. But it's going to dramatize the effect. Yeah. So whether it's subtle scratches, swirl marks, whatever, the point is, is you want to remove them mm -hmm. You don't want to just cover them up. Right. So this will actually dramatize the effect of covering up or enhancing yeah. this, eliminating and doing both. Right. So what would you like to try first? Actually, I want to start with the black well, light first. Okay, I was no, just okay, going to say, okay, okay. Well, let me rephrase that. Okay, okay. Would you like to be disappointed first or would you like to be enamored first? <laughs> I would like to see the black light first. Okay. Because then I want I want to see the wall factor right afterwards. Okay. Yeah. So let's put the black light in your hand. Okay. So this is not an endorsement for Flex Tool. It just happens to be one of the tools that I recommend. They make a quality tool. It's German engineering. This is what's called a random dual action polisher, meaning it they call it dual action because it has two movements. It spins and it vibrates. Some people will call it oscillate, some people call it vibrate, doesn't matter, it does it. What it's, what it's meant to do is replicate the movement of your hand. So the simple uh, definition is think of the sun, or I'm sorry, the earth. The earth spins on an axis point, mm -hmm. but also circles the sun, right? Yeah. So this spins and oscillates. Okay. So it spins around like right. the earth, right. but then it goes around the sun as a spinning. So okay. that's my oversimplified yeah. explanation of what this does. So this is their dual action, random orbital polisher, quality tool, pad. It's a foam pad. This is what's considering a cutting slash finishing pad. It's kind of the medium of both. Let me quickly clean this pad. There we have a relatively clean pad. For our demonstration purposes, that is sufficient. So, put this in your hand. Now, by the way, let me just ask, have you used, oh wait, you own a Chemical Guys. I wow, do. that's a coincidence. Mm -hmm. You own the Chemical Guys buffer, which is also a dual action random orbital polisher. Right. Okay, that's what I call an enthusiast, beginner type of polisher. Right. This is professional grade. Sure. So, how much polish do you think you should apply? And this really actually isn't a polish. Let's yeah. see how they label it. Hybrid radiant finish. Okay. Well, I don't even know what to do with those terms. I know. Hybrid radiant mm -hmm. finish. Whatever. Okay. Right. Just 
apply however much you think you should. How much I should or how much? Okay. Okay. Pretend I wasn't here. Okay. Let's pretend okay. you're in front of that car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, how much do you think you should, would you put on? And I realize a lot of this is going to be based on the, the amount of training that you and I have had. Okay. So, I have a feeling it's probably too much. <laughs> well, you know, it depends on who you ask because yeah. there's this big thing about priming the pad. This is one of these hyped up areas where it's like, oh, we have to prime the pad. So we're going to make sure that we cover every part of this pad with polish. Then we're going to come back in and apply a few more dollops. To me, that's just more hype. Right. Okay. So as you work this, it's going to put spread the, the polish naturally around the surface that you're working on anyways. Okay. So that's sufficient. Okay. So let's start with that. Now this is a variable speed, which means there's a spectrum of speed settings. Right. So right now it's on speed six, which is the highest. Okay. So because you're a beginner, <laughs> let's there. just dial it down. <laughs> yeah. Let's just go with a four okay. and go with that. Okay. So you pick whatever side you want to work on. We'll do the right side. Oh, okay. And then work. Yeah, There's okay. no right or wrong, you just go with it. <laughs> okay. What kind of pressure are you putting down on that, if any? Not very, not very much. Okay, why don't you go ahead and, and kind of lay into it. Okay, okay. Yeah, put some pressure into it. Yeah. You can tell by the markings. Yes. So I can tell that you're putting too much uh, pressure? sufficient amount of oh, pressure. Okay, on okay, it, okay, okay. But it's but it's, it's not spinning. Now, because it's not what's called a forced rotation, okay. dual action, yeah. meaning only one of the movements is gear driven. Okay. So because you're putting enough pressure on it, it's stopping the actual spinning of the pad itself and now it's just vibrating. Okay. So if, if this was a course on how to use a buffer, right. that's what I would be going more in length to. So just back off a little bit okay. so that it continues to vibrate and Got spin it. at the same time. I understand. Good question. That is a good question. That's a very huh? good question. Uh, I don't have an answer to that question, but I'm sure you do. <laughs> yeah, I do. Okay. Go ahead and wipe it. Yeah. Now you look at that and you tell me what happened. It was terrible. Terrible. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It didn't really do much of anything. It did very, very little. Obviously, that area is the area I focus the most. But right along here. Yeah. But yeah. even then, it. It doesn't even look But much in fairness to the product, yeah. it actually did enhance the look. So before we had complete what I call a satin finish. This is a scratch pattern mm -hmm. and it creates a satin finish. Now we have over here and the area that you concentrated more on, at least it has some shine to it, correct? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay. So it did something, but, but, but it didn't do did what, it what work. it worked. Yeah. It, right, it didn't do what you wanted. Yes. But that's where someone in audience land would say like, well, dude, if it was just like normal paint, mm -hmm. then that would be enough. Right. It's like, well, I don't know, would it? What I would do at this point is because I can, through experience, I can assure you that that product has what's called plenty of fillers in it. Okay. Silicates, which is silicone, mm -hmm. So there's all types of chemicals they can add to products that will create a filling, concealing effect to it, right. but it's temporary. So once you wash it with the right chemical or it's going to naturally wear away, mm -hmm. then it's going to look exactly like it did before. Right. Okay, so what I did is I went out into my van. Oh, a little sidebar, I gotta thank Tom again for letting us have access to his shop. I know that there's kind of a, you could say hidden agenda. It's like, well, 
Well, of course Tom's going to let you use his shop, Darren. I mean, you're promoting his product. It's like, okay, whatever. Uh, you know, there's a thousand ways Tom can promote his product independent of me. Right. So thank you, Tom, for letting us have you, access Tom. to this. <laughs> yeah. So this is my, it's a solution. Uh, it's what's called a 50-50 solution. Half rubbing alcohol, half water. I don't overthink it because there's this whole debate as to blah, blah, anyhow, don't get me, don't get me started. So what alcohol will do though is it will remove the fillers, the concealers, the whatever you want to call them. So what I want to do is see exactly what, and honestly as I'm wiping this, I'm impressed based on the description of the label, I'm impressed that the chemical guy's product was able to do this much to 1200 grit sanding mark. I'm actually impressed. So thumbs up chemical guys, okay? But that's not really the only problem here. That's actually a good problem. Once again, to ask that question again, did it do what you wanted it to do? No. But once again, in defense of chemical guys, if this was just a normal car with normal scratches, right. normal swore marks, you actually probably could perform at a level that would be acceptable to most car owners. Right. Because most car owners do not have a very developed eye and as long as they see shiny mm -hmm. and as long as they see shinier yeah. after you're done versus before you started, then a lot of times for most people that's going to be adequate. They're right. going to be like, oh wow, that looks so shiny. Thanks, Sean, you did a great job. I'm gonna tell you about, I'm gonna tell all my friends and family about you. So here we have that. You can see the difference. We have some shine created there. Not so much there, but that was the area that you concentrated on. So what I wanna do is now get you in the hands of a product that can actually do both. So lift up that buffer. This is the ceramics. It's kind of a play on words. It's like ceramic coating, but it's Ceram X. So you just pronounce it ceramics. So hold that. What I want to do is I want to clean this pad. So once again, you put on, well, just let, what we'll try to do is as fair as possible. Yeah. So same put amount. on, yes, the same amount of polish that you think you put on with the, um, the black light. I also want to point out that the way I'm putting the uh, polish on is the way the chemical guys taught me. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. So, to the best that you can, replicate the pressure. We kept it the same right. speed. Replicate what you did the first time, but do it now on the left side of this panel. Okay. So you go for it, and we're gonna film. Perhaps about, what we about, could have done is timed should, should it. Timed it. That's, yeah, that's good, yeah. Um, I think that was pretty, pretty close, close to the time. Now, what I want to do, and I'm going to do a little plug here for Auto Fiber. They're one of my favorite uh, microfiber cloth companies. Uh, you can thank me later, Ian. This is what's considered their edgeless. It has no edge to it, none of that traditional piping around it. So this is a virgin cloth. Okay, so what, yeah. I don't know okay. if the camera picked it up, but what were the words that first came out of your mouth? Uh, big difference. Okay, and you know why? Yeah. Because this is a true polish. Right. It's not a compound, right. which that's a video for another time. It's a true polish, yeah. which means it has some abrasives to it right. so that it can create a permanent difference in the surface of that paint. So in my world, yeah. as in my experience, I wanna create a permanent difference for my customers. Yeah. So let's take the alcohol, actually I wanna zoom in a little bit with my camera before I do an alcohol wipe. Now by no means is this going to be perfect, but that's, uh, that's pretty damn shiny. I, I think the difference is nine day. Okay. So, that's just me though. Well, there is a, there, trust me, there's a marked difference. So we have over to the right, go up and down. I mean, you can still see all the grooves very clearly on the camera. Over here, 
Uh, they're still there. Trust me, that's not a perfect, flawless finish. But yes, there is a marked difference between the two sides. So what I wanna do is I am trying to be fair. You hold that. Yep. Let's do the alcohol solution. I'm actually gonna spray even more the first time to even be less fair in this moment. And I'll do it again. In fact, I'm gonna go over both sides. And that's one of the cool things about CSI is that it is not made with heavy solvents. It's not made with fillers. And to put it in a simplified vernacular, I'm not even sure if that's the right word. To simplify it, what you see is what you get. Yeah. So because there's not a bunch of fillers and solvents in it, what you produce is what you produce. So you don't have to come back in and literally keep wiping it and rubbing it down with alcohol to remove the fillers and see like, oh, did I actually do a permanent or did I create the results that I really want? That's what's one of, one of many cool things about that polish. So, but to, to try to do this side-by-side -side comparison, yeah. I'm trying to be fair. I'm removing any fillers that may be there from either side if they exist. I know they exist on this side. I know this, this product's made without those. So here we are. So once again, do you see a difference? Yeah, not only that, but I also want to make another observation. Yeah. I noticed that when I did the right side, I put more pressure on the right side. Well, what'd you go and do that for? I know, I know. And well, and also not only that, but like, I think I spent less time on the left hand side and it feels like, I mean, it looks like way better. I, yeah. I mean, Okay. Nine Let me add this because I'm doing my best to, you know, mm -hmm. train you, teach you, yep. catch you up to speed. This is what's called aftermarket paint. And this also is what's considered a very, very hard clear coat. Okay. And because there is no true standardization in this industry, and if there's any that exist, it's very minuscule. This clear coat is what is considered a very hard clear coat. Okay. So yes, there is differences in clear, clo clear coat like anything else in the world. Whether it's fabrics, yeah. microfiber cloths, right. there is a difference. So this is a hard clear coat. On an aftermarket paint job, because it's applied by hand, mm -hmm. it's generally going to be applied much thicker than at the factory. The factory, their tolerances are so tight, yeah. and they want to. They're 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 kind of on the bare minimum plan as a rule. Okay. Meaning they want to get the car out of production and use the least amount as possible because it's all about the bottom line. Right. So as a rule, there's gonna be very few original equipment or what's called OEM, original equipment manufacturing, okay. that I'm gonna use 1200 grit sanding paper on because that's gonna remove a lot of material. As a rule, I wanna keep as much of that thickness of clear coat as possible while obtaining the results that I'm trying to obtain. So it's this balance act of how aggressive do I get while keeping as much clear coat intact as possible, yeah. but still producing the results that I want. Right. So often because you're working with such a thin layer of clear coat on original equipment, that it's a very fine balancing act. So if this was, let's say stock paint, mm -hmm. I would actually start out with 2000 grit, or 2,500 grit, somewhere along those lines. So 1,200 in my world is actually kind of aggressive. In the okay. paint body world, it's not considered overly aggressive at all because they have a lot more material to work with. Okay. That's just a little sidebar. Because what I wanna do now is bring you back in and have you go a second round with both of these polishes okay. and take it to a, the, the next level and see what that next level actually does. But if you're a beginner, which right. you are, right. you might be thinking, well, wait, okay, if I didn't achieve the desired results in the first go, mm -hmm. now you might be even more scared to come back in a second time yeah. and buff it even more. Right. Would that be a yes. fair statement? Yes. Okay, because I know I, I back in the day, that's that was one of my fears, like, wow, okay, it looks better, but A, I want it to look better, right. and B, 
I want the customer to think it looks as best as possible. Yeah. So now, if I was able to achieve this, if I go in a second time, maybe I can achieve even greater success. Right. But wait, what if I burn through the clear coat? Oh my gosh, what do I do? So in this case, it's a non-issue because one, it's not a customer's car anyways, and yeah. we can just repaint it if we want. Secondly, it's aftermarket paint, so I know it's thicker. But if it was a stock paint job, mm -hmm. yes, you would have to be more cautious. Okay. What we've done so far on stock paint, by the time we're done doing what we're doing, mm -hmm. we'll have reduced the clear coat more than I would like to. Okay. If the customer told me that they want to keep their car long term. Yeah. If they told me like, Darren, I don't care how much clear coat you remove, so long as you don't burn through it, mm -hmm. I just want it done. Right. It's like, well, then you could say, well, that's an ethical call to make, and but it's the it's Johnny customer's car. It's his car. Yeah. I work for him, right. so I'm gonna follow his lead. Right. What he does with that, that's up to, that's on his plate. So let's come back in. Okay. Let's start since we last used the uh, ceramics. Let's just start there. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about. Uh, cleaning the pad because we are using the same polish mm -hmm. and you haven't oversaturated the pad so I can take this cloth from you okay. and what I want to do this time is also dial it up to six okay. so whoa you're gonna go in hot now so apply your polish and just FYI yeah. the second time around that's actually more polish than I would apply okay. but it's not gonna make or break your moment that's right I'm, yeah. so okay. let's attack the left side okay. since that's the side that we're using the ceramics on um, and I'm gonna time it because I can see a timer on my camera yeah. let's just go with 30 seconds and what I want you to do is pick a pressure okay. and Stick replicate with. that when you do the other side of the panel got it all right go for it okay that was about 30 seconds give or take a second or two okay that you went over that second panel. I'm gonna take my cloth. Yep. Um, we're gonna wipe this off, which wipes off very easily. Yeah. So what do you think of those results? Because I'm looking at those results, and once again, if I was like a little puppy dog, mm -hmm. I'd be wet myself uh, whenever I come upon a new person to pet me. Yeah, it looks good. So, I mean, I like the looks. Yeah. Is it perfect? Is it flawless? No, it's not. I know that only because of experience. Yeah. I would continue to work on that a little bit differently based on pad pressure, speed, right. those types of things. But those are pretty amazing results considering we started out with 1200 grit sanding marks. So let's do the same thing over here. Okay. And then we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, and since we are gonna change polishes, I will clean this pad. You find the black, whatever it's called. And usually in a case like this, I'm actually gonna take my alcohol solution and I'm going to spray the pad. And then I'm just gonna take a microfiber cloth and I'm gonna hold it onto the pad and turn it on. And that's really my simple way of cleaning a pad. Then I might take my tool, give it a little go like that. Okay, so we're keeping the same speed. Yeah. You apply the same amount of polish, right. same pressure. We're gonna time you for 30 seconds. We're gonna see what happens. I'll do the same amount I did on the other one, even though, Please. Uh, even though I know yeah, it's yeah. not too much. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'll take that from yeah. you. Go for it and I'll time you. We'll say that smells good though. Uh, come again? It smells good. It does smell good. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, it does smell good. But with that said is, since you brought it up, yeah. uncap that okay. and you smell it and tell me what you smell. I don't smell anything. <laughs> that is the perfect answer. Yeah. Yeah. You know what you will typically smell with compounds or polishes mm -hmm. is a heavy solvent smell. Huh. Okay, and that's an indicator of, wait for it, heavy solvents in the formulation. Uh, because you don't smell anything yeah. is a strong indicator that there's no heavy solvents in the formulation. Interesting. Yes. Good. So 
glad I brought that That's up. Only, yes, <laughs> thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. <laughs> so here we are, we wiped it with our quality microfiber cloth. Once again, thank you Auto Fiber. And let's take a look. And, and honestly, based on the description of that bottle, I'm actually impressed that it was able to do what it was able to do. Did it remove the sandy marks? Absolutely not. But what it did do is it, is it polished the sandy marks themselves. So we still have what's called cornrows, valleys, grooves, use whatever term you want. The point is, is that there's, there's still very specific sandy marks left in the paint but now they've been enhanced at a permanent level so that the sanding marks are at least shinier. So did it perform like hardcore paint correction? I don't know, it depends on your in, uh, interpretation of what hardcore paint correction is. If I was doing wet sanding as I did here and I was trying to create a flawless finish, then I think the choice is pretty obvious as to what product would work. Um, so here we have a product that can actually remove the sanding marks as well as provide an exceptional gloss. That's a pretty good winning combination in my book. Yes. Would you agree? Would, do yes. you like that combination? I do. I would think. Mm -hmm. This, it will enhance the sanding marks. It won't remove them. So it does do enhancement. And because I'm doing the alcohol wipe, and it still shows some gloss and right. some shine tells me that it is changing the surface of this paint at a permanent level because I'm removing any of the fillers that are contained therein. So once again, based on the description of that, I'm actually impressed. So but, but I think you can feel a little less disappointed in your purchase. But as a beginner, I will say this much that if I had a choice, I'd rather have the CSI product because it does both. One only does one, right? the other one does both. Yeah. So I'd rather have the other one. That's just me. Well, yeah, <laughs> who wouldn't want to kill yeah. the yeah. saying, who wouldn't want to kill two birds with one stone? Yeah. So we have, I, don't, I have no idea how much. Can't, you know, until you've had the pleasure of shooting videos yourself, you just do not realize how frustrating it can be because the slightest change in lighting can change what uh, is captured on film. But what is captured on film is not necessarily true to life because lighting comes in so many different versions. You know, whether it's uh, artificial lighting, like LEDs, fluorescent, incandescent lighting, mm -hmm. then you have natural sunlight from the sunlight itself or the reflection of the sunlight. So it's just very, I'm just illustrating how frustrating it is being on that side of the camera. So in conclusion, the industry, it's very confusing, especially for beginners. My goal moving forward is to dissect this industry at every level with a, uh, a surgeon's scalpel and just deconstruct it so that yeah. there's greater understanding. Right. And it's not just the, hey, what is this product supposed to do? But it's like, well, you say it does this, does it really do that? And that term, I don't even understand that. Uh, so help me understand that term. Mm -hmm. But is that term even relevant to my world as a professional detailer or as a car owner? Or is that just a word that you grabbed out of the air to sell more product? And a question that I didn't fully answer. Where's your black light product? Just right there on the floor. Okay. So I asked, could this be a weight loss <laughs> supplement yeah. or product? And you said yes. And yeah. you're like, well, only because you say so I have experience. Right. How it is a weight loss supplement is because when you walked out of there, yeah. you probably had less money in your oh, pocket yeah. <laughs> than before, yeah. right? Right, right, right. So officially, once that's out of your hand, yeah because yeah. now we're adding weight to okay, you. Yeah, so I'm right. getting very technical here. Okay, right. Officially, you're gonna be lighter in the pocketbook, right. okay? Right. Unfortunately, that is the main agenda for so many manufacturers is like, how do we separate you from your money? Yeah. Well, we're gonna do that with saturating you with more and more choices. Unfortunately, in my opinion, 
that actually, I could argue that does, that actually creates more damage than good. Yeah. Because now guys get so frustrated and that's part of uh, my big, one of my big pet peeves with the industry is that you have guys on YouTube, mm -hmm. guys on forums, yeah. and they want to be special themselves and so they will complicate things that don't need to be complicated, especially right. for a beginner. Right. And now as a beginner, you sit on the sidelines, you read this endless voices, and you become more and more confused, mm -hmm. more and more frustrated, more filled with fear and anxiety, yeah. and now you never even venture out. Right. And you're like, oh my gosh, I don't even know where to begin, yeah. and therefore you do nothing. Right. That's what I'm. one of the major things I'm trying to avoid. Mm -hmm. I want you to do something. I want you to at least test something out right. and, 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 and start building up that experience. Yeah. So in 50,000 words or less, mm -hmm. that's the message of the day. So till next time, do you have any parting questions, words that I could answer in like two sentences or less? Uh, no, but the one thing I will say that uh, I'm glad to be here and I've learned so much today. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm always pleased yeah. to hear that. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. All right. Till next time, guys. We'll see you on the next video.